Hi, my name is Justin Reese. I'm a research scientist at Berkeley Lab. So I'll tell you about KG Hub, which is our ecosystem for facilitating uh, discovery of biological and biomedical knowledge using knowledge graphs. So a quick summary of what I'll talk about. Uh, I'll give you an intro to knowledge graphs if you're not familiar. I'll detail uh, a couple of use cases, uh, specifically our KG COVID-19, COVID-19 use case. And I'll go into KG Hub, sort of our, our goals and design patterns, uh, all of the tooling we have integrated. Uh, I'll briefly go through the nine or so KG Hub projects that we have. Now I'll do a quick uh, GraphML demo. GraphML is one of the use cases that we're most interested in applying to, to KGs. So we'll train a GraphML model in, in line uh, nine lines of Python code. Uh, and then finally, I'll go through uh, um, some of our ongoing work to, to try and leverage LLMs for constructing KGs. Here are the slides if you want to follow along. So what are knowledge graphs? Conceptually, this is very simple. Um, entities, people, places, genes, concepts, those are all represented as nodes on a graph. And then the relationships between these entities are uh, represented by edges between those nodes. So this is a really flexible and easy way of adding new data, at least compared to a relational model. This gives us really rich representation of complex data, both entities and their relationships. And this is a really elegant way of integrating multimodal biological data. So for example, here is a paper from uh, the Zitnik lab where they've integrated uh, a lot of biological data from a lot of different sources. So uh, the green arrow represents uh, data you might get from a clinical trial, drug uh, treats disease. Uh, the red line would uh, represent maybe epidemiological data. This exposure causes this disease. The blue line might represent uh, data that you will get from RNA-seq. So this gene is expressed in this anatomical region. So this is a really elegant way of combining data from a lot of different uh, domains in, in biology. So what can you use these for? Obviously, if you go to the trouble of, of making a knowledge graph, uh, it stores your data and also, as I said, represents your data in a really elegant way. This also is a really convenient way of querying and browsing your data. So this is good for generating hypotheses about your data or just generally familiarizing yourself with the data. One of our favorite use cases, though, is graph machine learning. So graph machine learning on, on, on KGs was famously used to create uh, social networks that I'm sure everybody's familiar with, Facebook, Twitter, and a lot of others. You can also use KGs to, to generate new biological knowledge, uh, or what Barabasi termed uh, network medicine. Um, we made some contributions in this area too. Um, we have this GraphML package called GRAPE, which I'll, I'll go into later. We, we made a, a KG to integrate COVID-19 data called KG COVID-19. We've also done a lot of other work on uh, GraphML algorithms and actually applying them to biological data. Um, so uh, um, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, um, we put together a uh, uh, COVID-19 knowledge graph uh, that we call KG COVID-19. But this underscores uh, a, a theme, I think, which is in, in biology, lack of data typically is not the problem. So before the, the pandemic even hit, we had data about SARS-CoV-1, that was a thing, MERS and other coronaviruses, and then SARS-CoV-2 hit, and people started generating just droves, uh, um, massive amounts of data, you know, drug data, viral host PPIs, sequencing data, uh, Go annotations, and just an endless, uh, endlessly longer list than that. And of course, there's more SARS-CoV-2 data by the, by the minute. Um, but really the main challenge early on and even now is data integration. The data tends to be siloed, it tends to be trapped in text. It's behind separate APIs or in various file formats. And this problem doesn't just apply to COVID-19 or biology. This, this problem comes up in, in, in many other data science domains. Um, and so we constructed KG COVID-19, at least to, 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 to solve this problem for COVID-19 data. Here is a high level view of what is in KG COVID-19. So we have about 60,000 drugs. Uh, 50,000 or so publications, uh, all go terms, all human diseases, all human phenotypes, human genes and human proteins, and of course, SARS-CoV-2 and other uh, coronavirus uh, 
uh, genes and proteins. So we released this COVID-19 knowledge graph as a community resource. It's currently being used in N3C. It was also used in uh, the National Virtual Bio Biotechnology Laboratory, which was a DOE effort to address the pandemic. Um, you can read more about it in this publication here. We also applied GraphML on KG COVID-19 to see if we could find some drugs that might have some effect on SARS-CoV-2. That's what I'm showing you here. If you embed the nodes in, in KG COVID-19 into a simple experiment to see how close in embedding space the drugs are to SARS-CoV-2, um, you see this nice uh, Gaussian distribution. And then you see this, this shoulder off to the right, which likely represents uh, drugs that probably have some uh, direct or ind indirect relationship with, with uh, COVID-19. So we did a deep dive on a few of these, and um, uh, it, it turns out others were looking at these drugs also. And so we collaborated with them to, to sort of corroborate what the graph ML was telling us. Um, you can read more about our work on uh, metformin drug repurposing and uh, the effect of NSAIDs on, on SARS-CoV-2 too. So what's the problem? Well, the problem with KGs is the ecosystem we've created as scientists is not very fair. Um, the KGs themselves are not typically very findable. They're strewn across the internet or they're only mentioned in passing in papers and it's actually pretty hard to find a URL to download them or worse yet, they're not in the internet at all. Um, if you can find them, they're typically not very interoperable. There's not a, a common data model really that, uh, that everybody agrees with uh, for representing the data, uh, which admittedly is very hard. Um, they're, they're typically not very reusable. So how specifically a KG was built is, is pretty unclear typically. Um, there's a lack of provenance. You know, where did the data come from? How was it transformed? And uh, it's also very difficult to typically to add or remove components. So if you have a KG you're interested in, you want to layer your data on top of it, that's typically kind of hard. And there, there's also no standard operating procedure for building KGs and no standard way of doing QC. So the result of this is a lot of duplication of effort and a lot of frustration and uh, just generally slower research. Um, and so our, our goal in broad strokes in creating KG, KG Hub was to address that. So we wanted to create a knowledge graph ecosystem with these properties. So sort of a, a federated KG of uh, a KG ecosystem uh, based on a, a set of useful patterns that we, we think would, are, is a good way of doing this. So if you're familiar with Obo Foundry, this is a similar idea um, for ontologies. So. Um, you know, they're not necessarily completely aligned, but they're a federation of ontologies that were created with a common set of, of principles in mind. So the, the idea here is oboe foundry for, for KGs, if you like. We want to preserve provenance, uh, maximize reproducibility and fairness. And so we also want to allow remixing of subgraphs. So it happens a lot that you might be interested in uh, incorporating string PPIs in, into a knowledge graph. And so it, KG Hub allows you to go find a, a pre-transformed version of, of string and download it. Um, we provide tooling for less painful downloads, for less painful transforms from, from raw data into graph format, ID normalization. Um, we align to the BioLink data model. This is a high level um, biological data model that, that makes it a lot easier to mix and match knowledge graphs between projects. If people align to the BioLink data model, then we, we know where their genes are, where our genes are, and we can more easily align them. Um, we're very fond of incorporating ontologies into, into knowledge graphs. So we've made it easy to incorporate any of 204 OBO ontologies. Um, made it easy to do QC to sort of quickly assess the contents of KGs and their topological features. Um, and uh, it's very easy to to browse, uh, uh, you know, all the data and artifacts for a project online. Um, we, we've also gone to great pains to make it easy, fast, reproducible, reproducible graph and mail possible. So how does all this work? So typically, um, when you're building a KG, you have this upstream data that often is in tabular form. So here's a list of patients and their conditions. Um, and then, as I said, we were very fond of incorporating ontologies into knowledge graphs. So those uh, are pre-transformed 
into something we call KG oboe. Here's a list of diseases and genes that are involved with those diseases and drugs that affect uh, particular diseases. So we apply ETL tooling and that breaks down in three steps. We have uh, a download uh, software called KG Hub Downloader. This is a frequent point of failure in, in ETL. And so we've made this fault tolerant and, and sort of re-entrant if you like. Um, after the data, data is download, we provide a tool called uh, COZO, which allows for simple declarative transform of, of typically tabular data into graph ML, into graph format. Um, those graphs are combined into one graph using a tool called KGX. And so you can see down below the data that started off as tabular is now in, uh, in graph form. And so this provides this sort of creates what you might call emergent knowledge. So none, uh, the, it creates uh, sort of relationships, for example, between patients and drugs that would that were not present in, in the original data sources. And this provides a really good substrate for um, a lot of different use cases, particularly GraphML. Um, one of our uh, another one of our goals was to make it easier to sort of remix KGs. So um, it. It's been typically pretty difficult to find a subgraph that somebody else has transformed of, say, like I mentioned, string. Um, if you want to incorporate that into your KG, you would typically do that yourself. This provides a way of going and getting somebody else's transform of, of a string and incorporating it into your KG. <clears throat> All of this, um, the ETL process for KG Hub is, is YAML driven. So for example, how to download the data and where is uh, specified in a download.yaml uh, file. Um, this is fed to KG Hub Downloader, which downloads the data. Um, the transform that happens, um, these and, and makes subgraphs for each of the upstream data sources. These can be recombined uh, according to a merge.yaml file. So you can mix and match all of the uh, components, the subgraphs in, in a way that, that builds you a KG exact, that's exactly what you want. Um, uh, we take care of, by virtue of COSA of uh, ID normalization. And as I said before, we align with the, the bilink data model that's pr provided for in COSA automatically. And so all the data is uh, aligned to a data model that makes it easier to uh, mix and match with other projects that are also using the bilink data model. Here are uh, the current KG Hub projects, uh, uh, nine of them, I think. Um, KG COVID-19, I mentioned before, KG Microbe integrates microbe data, KG IDG is integration of data and uh, of drug and related data for a project that we participated in called Illuminating the, Gen the Druggable Genome for Drug Discovery. Um, KG Monarch is a KG representation of the, of the Monarch graph. Um, we work closely with a lot of members of the Monarch Initiative <clears throat> and uh, developed a lot of the tooling I've just described with with that team of which we are a part. Um, EcoKG is uh, integration of plant uh, genotype and phenotype data. As, as I said before, KG obo is sort of a pre-transformed of all obo ontologies, uh, 204 of them. Um, KG Pheno is a subset of, of KG obo ontologies that we that we frequently use. So we we pre-transform those. Uh, into a sort of a modular set of, of KG of uh, ontologies that we can use for KGs. These follow common design patterns, as I said, um, the ETL process I just described. We follow a property graph model that's represented in a format we call KG, uh, KGX TSV, um, which is a simple TSV format. Um, COSA gives us simple declarative transforms. And as I said, these are easily remixable. We provide stable URLs for all builds. So typically in a monthly cadence, um, each of these is rebuilt uh, and put somewhere with all of, the, all of the artifacts, all the subgraphs, all the, the provenance data uh, you know, in stable URL format. Um, and we provide a lot of downstream tooling too that can be applied to these. So here is a schematic representation of all this and how, how all of these parts interact. Um, we, uh, we host the ETL code in GitHub. So the software developers who's interested in, in 
making a new project would create a new project under the uh, KG Hub organization in GitHub. Um, whenever that code changes or uh, a month passes, typically we would do another build using uh, a CI tool called Jenkins. <clears throat> Optionally, uh, we can use KGX to output data directly into a Neo4j or BlazeGraph database or freeze, freeze this off as files. Um, as I said, one of the main use cases we're interested in is GraphML, and so we helped develop this package called Grape, which I'll go into in a, in a, in a minute. Um, if you have a, a typical, if you have a, a, a GraphML task that you're interested in doing, uh, on every monthly build, then you can specify that using a tool called Neat. Um, that is also YAML, YAML driven. So every time uh, a new build appears, you can re redo in a reproducible way the GraphML task you're interested in. Um, also, by virtue of aligning with Grape, we have a API access to all KG Hub graphs. So, for example, if you're interested in the latest version of KG COVID 19 and you're in Python, you can just say from grape.datasets.kghub and port KG COVID-19. Um, all these builds go directly into the cloud after we build them, uh, S3, Amazon. Um, the homepage uh, points to these artifacts. You can also browse all of the files uh, in your browser. This provides full provenance for all the data that was used to generate the, the KG. So all the code and all the data um, that you can use to re to rebuild the KG lives on there. Uh, we have summary statistics, graph artifacts, and all the subgraphs too, if you're interested in just one part of, um, of the previous build. Um, we provide uh, tooling to display the contents of, of, of the KG. So, you know, here's a KG, what bilink node types and edge, edge types exist in there, and, you know, what is what exactly is ingested from each source. Um, as I said, one of our main uh, interests is GraphML on these KGs after after we build them. <clears throat> so, as I said before, we provide programmatic access to, to KG Hub KGs via Grape, um, and we think that the combination of these two is is a really powerful tool for re reproducible GraphML. So, here, for example, is an entire reproducible pipeline to download a version build of KG code of uh, KG IDG from July 2021. This is frozen off; it will never change. Make connected holdouts for a test train split, generate node embeddings, train a perceptron edge pr uh, prediction model, all in line uh, nine lines of code, uh, and on my laptop any, anyway, less than 20 minutes of runtime. So this works now. You can download this code. It should work the same on your on your laptop. It should work a year from now and five years from now. Ooh. Another uh, future direction we're currently pursuing is using large language models like GPT-4 to build KGs directly. So the, the way this typically works now is uh, scientists do experiments, they write up their knowledge in scientific literature, that eventually uh, in an incomplete way and kind of a slower way makes it percolates its way into databases. The databases typically are what we download uh, to feed into ETL tooling that I described before. The idea here though, is to use large language models to directly import knowledge from scientific literature. And so sort of, sort of short circuit this uh, circuit right here and go directly from scientific literature into uh, graph data. Um, this is possible because of a tool called OntoGBT, which Harry Caulfield will be talking about, poster A087. Um, you can also read more about it in this preprint. So the idea here is, as I said, to, to leverage LLMs to ingest knowledge directly from, from scientific literature. And so we're investigating this to sort of build in an autom automatic way bespoke KGs for a particular disease domain. So if you're interested in inflammatory bowel disease, you can automatically query PubMed, find identify the, the papers that might be of interest and directly import their knowledge and kind of layer it on an existing KG uh, with things like uh, biomedical ontologies and other uh, data from databases. Uh, some quick acknowledgments. Uh, Harry Caulfield was uh, instrumental kind of in down in the trenches building a lot of the tooling that I described. Um, Chris Mungle also uh, um, was involved uh, 
um, and the entire uh, Bebop crew from Berkeley Lab. Uh, we worked very closely with Peter Robinson's lab at Jackson Lab. Um, we were also worked very closely with Giorgio Valentini at University of Milan uh, and Elena Kasaragi. Luca and Tommy did uh, most of the development on Grape, which I described. Uh, we worked very closely with Melissa Andel at CU Anschutz. And uh, Tiffany Callahan is the de developer of Phenolator, uh, which you may have heard of. And so we uh, sort of in parallel de de developed a lot of these design patterns and tooling with her. Thanks for listening.